Hi friends, this is Gautam. In this video tutorial, I can teach the topic first hop reference protocol. What is the usage of this protocol? For an example, in an office network, 100 PCs are connected. If the default gateway goes down means the entire network should be affected. To overcome this problem, we can use first hop reference protocol. It is an layer 3 reference protocol. Let's we can see. Reference. Reference is good. So this is an example topology. So in this topology there is two, two default gateways are there. So the PC1 and PC2 can reach ISP through two ways are there. One is 200.200.200.1 and another way is 200.200.200.2 to reach ISP. So in PC1 I can assign the default gateway as 200.200.200.1 and in PC2 also I can assign the default gateway as 200.200.200.1. Now PC1 and PC2 to communicate to ISP through R2 router that is 200.200.200.1 and to reach the ISP and PC2 also it can goes to 200.200.200.1 and it can reach the ISP so if this R2 router link fast ethernet 0 slash 0 link can goes down means the PC1 and PC2 cannot communicate to ISP through R2 router because R2 router fast ethernet 0 slash 0 link can be goes down. So now again we can go to the PC1 and change the default gateway as 200.200.200.2 and PC2 also we can change the default gateway as 200.200.200.2. Now the PC1 can communicate to ISP through R3 router that is 200.200.200.2 and PC2 also can communicate to ISP router through R3 router the default gateway is 200.200.200.2 so there is lot of manual work we can changing the default gateway and reset the devices so if you are using first hop reference protocol means we no need to change the default gateway so instead of we can manually assign the default gateway so we can assign the virtual IP if we are using first hop reference protocol means we can assign the virtual IP so here the virtual IP is 200.200.200.5 so PC1 and PC2 we can assign the default gateway as 200.200.200.5 next automatically it will create the virtual MAC address for this virtual IP address so now R2 links goes down means we no need to change the default gateway for PC1 and PC2 it automatically switch over to R3 router so how to the router takes place its active or standby for an example this is an R2 router this is an R3 router so if it is uh, active router means the traffic can be goes through this router if it is standby router means it cannot send any traffic through this router until it becomes the active so it can sense the hollow packets every certain times it sends the hollow packet so through the hollow packet it can be select as an active state and standby state next question is how the client can switch over here the client cannot be switch over because in the client in the pc we can assign the virtual ip address as default gateway only the gateway can be change over next one is how does hop catch issues that means normally the pc can send the broadcast packet to request for or request for default gateway so this is an active router means this active router cannot send its physical mac address that means the physical interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 interface mac address cannot be sent to the R request instead of that we can create virtual ip it automatically create the virtual mac address that virtual mac address only can be sent to the pc1 and pc2 so if r2 links goes down means there is no problem it automatically switch over to r3 router and it can be communicating to the isp next one so if this van link goes down means how this router can know so we can configure track option 
so we can track this interface so if this links goes down means it automatically decrement the priority value so depends upon the priority value only it can elected as an active state and standby state so if this links goes down means the priority value can be decrement means it automatically goes to standby state so the pc1 and pc2 cannot communicate to isp through r2 router instead of that it can be communicated to isp through r3 router next so flavors of redundancy there are three different flavors of first of redundancy protocol so first one is an hsrp so hsrp expansion is hot standby router protocol and vrrp so vrrp expansion is virtual router redundancy protocol and glbp glbp expansion is gateway load balancing protocols so under first hop redundancy protocol there are three types of first hop redundancy protocols are there hsrp vrrp and glbp let's we can see now first we can focus on hsrp so hot standby router protocol so here the gateways are organized into standby groups so if r2 and r3 two routers are there here this is an example topology for hsrp so r2 and r3 so two routers are there so this two routers can be organized into single group so that's why only it can be the gateways are organized into standby groups next one one gateway is active state and others in standby state so that means if one gateway is active means so the all the traffic can goes through that gateway the standby state is wait until it becomes the active then only that stand that router can pass the traffic next one virtual ip and mac address is generated so once we can configure virtual ip in hsrp means it automatically generate the mac address so next one so hsrp is created by cisco in 1994 here the allow packet is every 3 seconds and hold on time is every 10 seconds so next one is a cisco proprietary so hsrp is a cisco proprietary protocol that means this protocol can supports only in cisco device so the multicast address so multicast address for hsrp version 1 so in hsrp there are two versions are there version 1 and version 2 so in router we can configure hsrp version 1 means all the hsrp routers can be communicating through multicast address that is 224.0.0.2 